Um, my name's Sandy Gilbert. I'm a uh, proud Prairie uh, Canadian that left Calgary last night with a Chinook and arrived in uh, Ottawa without one. Sorry about that. <laughs> Um, I'm the uh, chair of the National Angel Capital Organization, uh, which is uh, represented by the angel investors, accelerators and incubators that really support and fuel the growth of early stage companies in Canada. And I'm thrilled to be here to uh, participate in this announcement today. Um, we have with us some honorable guests that I'm going to um, introduce in a moment. Uh, but first, I'd just like to say that this is an initiative that the federal government um, has um, really committed to uh, developing and helping grow our early stage companies so that they can compete in the global economy that we live in today. Uh, this support, we often say, um, you know, that first customer is really key to validating businesses so they can get out there and then enter the market and say, we've got a proven uh, product, we have customers and we have revenue and we need more. So I really applaud the uh, federal government for taking this initiative. And right now I'd like to um, just introduce our distinguished guests who told me to keep it short, so I'll see if I can do that. Uh, first of all, I'd like to um, introduce uh, Minister Bartis Jagger. She's the Minister of Small Business and Tourism and the leader of the government in the House of Commons. She was born and raised in Waterloo, Ontario, and I heard them having a little bit back and forth between Ottawa and Waterloo just this morning. She's, and how we work together. Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, she holds a Bachelor of Science degree from the University of Waterloo and has spent many years as a community organizer prior to heading to Ottawa. In recognition of her tireless work, she was a 40 under 40, future leaders who will help shape and lead the Waterloo region. And she is a passionate advocate for small business across Canada and has visited the United States, China and India to promote Canadian entrepreneurship and excellence in a variety of fields from clean technology to agriculture. She's achieved great things in her role as Minister for Tourism. In May 2017, she launched a new tourism vision for Canada to help this vital part of our economy grow and thrive and is spearheading the government efforts on the 2018 Canada-China Year of Tourism. She's very proud to belong to Canada's first feminist government and its historic gender balance cabinet and is the first female leader of the government in the House of Commons. Way to go. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Minister Jagger. Not that short, but... That is always possible. And now I'd like to introduce the Honourable Navdeep Baines, Canada's Minister of Innovation, Science and Economic Development and the Member of Parliament for Mississauga Malton. His first act since he was appointed minister in 2015 was to restore the long form census. Since then, he's been a strong voice for Canada's business community and has made fostering economic growth through innovation a high priority for the government of Canada. He has led the development of the government's innovation and skills plan, which was the centerpiece of the 2017 federal budget. The plan aims to create new jobs and business opportunities for Canadians by making this country a world leading centre for innovation. Mr. Baines also uh, spearheaded negotiations amongst the provinces and territories that led to the Canadian Free Trade Agreement, an ambitious agreement that will open up trade within Canada and in many sectors of the economy. And finally, and very importantly, Minister Baines has been a passionate advocate for diversity and inclusion and has introduced a bill in Parliament that promotes the advancement of women, cultural minorities and other underrepresented groups to the highest levels of leadership in corporate Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Minister Baines. And lastly, I'd like to give the mic to um, Michael Tremblay here in a moment. He's the President and CEO of um, Invest Ottawa, who's hosting us today. Mike joined Invest Ottawa in March of this year and brings more than 30 years of executive leadership experience with multinational corporations like Microsoft, SAP Canada, Fujitsu, JDS Uniface, EDS System House, and DAC. Long list. An Ottawa native, Mike is deeply engaged in the community, contributing to the Algonquin College Board of Governors and Foundation Board for more than 13 years and audit and advocacy committees with the Children's Hospital of Eastern Ontario for the last six. Please help me in welcoming Mike, and it's over to you. Thank you. <laughs> thanks, thanks very much, Sandy. And we, we did get an Edmonton Clipper last week, so uh, that, that did hey, happen. Hey, Calgary. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all good. So welcome everybody. Welcome to Bayview Yards. I, I see a lot of familiar faces uh, and uh, for those of you that have discovered this place for the first time, 
This is such an amazing place where we collaborate and innovate together. And it's really only made possible through generous donations from the city, the province, and of course the federal government of Canada, who have helped us here at this site to establish the cybersecurity lab. But I think we have uh, Tony and, uh, and his team here uh, over in the back from Carleton University. And we have a makerspace in the back also available here because of, uh, of FedDev Ontario funding. So thank you so much for that. So I'm thrilled that we're here to participate in this important announcement today. And, uh, and I do want to welcome our two distinguished guests. Uh, so Minister Chagger, I understand this is your first time here. In this space, yes. And so uh, welcome to uh, Bayview, and we look forward to showing you around. And uh, Minister Baines, you've been here a number of times. Yes, I have. You've seen this from that moment where it was uh, a facility that was very close to being demolished uh, to now, and I think the last time you were here was at the Governor General's Innovation Awards. That's correct, that's right. Which was uh, a wonderful event. So it's great to see the transformation from an old truck facility uh, built in the early 40s to something now that helps to support our ambitions in the fourth industrial revolution. So welcome to you both. Uh, so today's announcement is really uh, connected to the uh, budget of last year, which, which talked about Innovation Solutions Canada. And so I think I'll start uh, perhaps with, with you, Minister Baines. Uh, so when we look at the announcement, it was very much modeled against what uh, I think a lot of us see as the U.S. Uh, SBIR program, so the Small Business Innovation and Research uh, Program. Um, and one of the things that I, I looked up this morning just to see uh, some of the alumni, if you will, that came through the U.S. program, the, the uh, big one that came out, of course, is Qualcomm. <coughs> and for us in Ottawa, because we're so deep on comm sector and things like autonomous vehicles, Qualcomm really stands out as a, as a company that is connected to a lot of our business locally. Um, I checked out their market cap today. It's $96.5 billion. This is a company that started off as a small business, went through the U.S. program. So when you, when you think about that and you think about the ambitions that you have, Minister, for this program, can you share with us what's really been announced today? Uh, thank you very much, and it's a delight to be here in Bayview Yards, and I want to acknowledge my colleagues, our colleagues, uh, Will Amos and uh, Chandra Arya as well, who are local as well. Oh, and Karen as well. Uh, so it's great to, uh, I just want to make sure anyone else. <laughs> so we've got a great local team here as well, and um, you're absolutely right. Uh, delighted to be here to talk about this very important launch of a, a very important initiative. Uh, when it comes to helping companies succeed. And I think the point that you illustrated with the U.S. example through the SBIR program that you highlighted really speaks to this government's vision. Uh, it's really around growth, and it's about creating not only strong, successful Canadian companies, but global companies as well. And what's the role of government in this? What can we do? And we believe we can be a marquee customer. We believe we have, we're in a unique position. Uh, if you look at our procurement, number, we procure around $18 billion annually. And if you take defense and military out, that's $9 billion of procurement that we do on an annual basis. So we are an important customer in the Canadian economy, and we do a lot of business with a lot of companies. And we believe that uh, we present a unique opportunity for Canadian companies to succeed. And so this program is really about the government being a marquee customer to help Canadian companies grow and scale. Uh, and scale is a key part. Uh, that's what success looks like. Uh, we want to see small companies become medium sized medium become large, and large become even larger. It's the, the idea that we need to have that level of ambition. Uh, and so this program is designed uh, a bit different than the previous kind of iterations that we've had around procurement. It's about the government actually going out and presenting a, a set of challenges, uh, uh, difficulties, uh, or issues that we're dealing with. Uh, and uh, we want companies that necessarily don't do business with the government of Canada, uh, Canadian companies, potentially startup companies, uh, innovative companies, to come forward with solutions. And we'll help them with the proof of concept, and we'll help them with the prototype. And so we're willing to spend up to $150,000 on the proof of concept, and up to a million dollars on the prototype. And so that's a significant investment. And also uh, to also highlight the fact that it's not only one or two departments, it'll be 20 departments. Right. So it's really a whole of government approach uh, with clear targets. Uh, each department at bare minimum have to present 1% of their R&D and procurement money on this program. And so that's why the level of ambition exists. It's about $100 million. So we're really excited. We think this is a great opportunity for Canadian companies to really grow and scale up 
We think government, uh, as a marquee customer, can provide that opportunity. And the program officially launches today, and we're delighted to be here to talk about it. Oh, we're certainly excited about it here in, in Ottawa. Um, if you look deeply at the history of our city, um, the reason that we have such a large tech capability, we have almost 11% uh, tech employees in the city. In fact, uh, Ian is here. We, we talked about this over dinner one night with uh, Ottawa University. You know, why does Ottawa have such a big tech area? And it's because government is here. We've got 65 labs here. Uh, and if you look deeply enough, those labs spawn businesses which uh, gain momentum. And so for us here in Ottawa, it's a really big opportunity. But we see past it as well. We see a three and a half trillion dollar government modernization market worldwide. Yes. And so for us, very exciting. So I encourage all organizations across the country to lean in on this. It's a, it's a big opportunity as governments modernize. Absolutely. Now, Minister, when you look at this, there's, there's a number of programs that are already available from the Government of Canada. Uh, the uh, strategic innovation funds are out there. We have uh, uh, a team of uh, Build Canada Innovation Program representatives right here at Bayview Yards. Uh, there's also an ideas program for defense. Can you try to help land for us uh, how this is perhaps different than those? Like even this morning, the CBC covered uh, the Canadian digital services uh, offering through Treasury Board services, where they're bringing in um, uh, veterans from the tech sector to come in and secondment for a period of time to help support that. Perhaps put that into context for us. So you're right. There's different initiatives that the government is deploying. Uh, this really reflects the... A, a key concern we heard from businesses. When we went out there and we engaged businesses as part of the consultation process for our innovation and skills plan, uh, they said time and time again, look, when we go abroad in particular, and uh, we have this great idea, a great solution, and they ask us, do you do business with the government of Canada, or do you do business with a provincial government or a municipal government? And often when you say no, it makes it very difficult to succeed. Yeah. But if you say yes, it opens up doors. So that's, that's one objective, is the level of ambition with this program. It's $100 million, uh, and so we believe that, um, that it will really help a range of companies. Uh, I think the, what's different about this program is, is a couple of things. One is it actually, as I mentioned earlier, comprises the whole of government. So it's 20 departments as opposed to one or two specific departments that you highlighted. Secondly, it goes away from the lowest cost model. So right now, procurement exists where we ha go out there, get a bunch of bids in a competitive process, and find the lowest cost, pos lowest possible solution, a cost solution. Um, this is not necessarily designed for that. This is designed on what problem can you solve? What innovative solution can you bring forward? So the paradigm shifts, yeah. the culture shifts, the mindset shifts. So that's a big different, uh, a differentiating factor as well. Secondly, we now have a system where people and businesses come to the government and go online and see where they can actually go and make bids. We're actually going out presenting a bunch of challenges, going out presenting a bunch of problems. It could be gridlock, healthcare related, for example, and across the board on different departments. So that's another different uh, dimension to it. So I would say the fact that we're actually going out as opposed to being inward, uh, the fact that we have many departments versus one or two departments, and the fact that we're avoiding the low-cost model and looking at the best solution is really how this program is different than some of those other initiatives. That's very helpful to put the context. And the, the, uh, the envelope of money is actually very strong as well, $100 million. Uh, that's a lot to get started, so that's great. That, and that's the key part. It just, you know, it's, it's almost to see how, how we can really change the culture, and the potential is much greater. As I said, we procure up to $9 billion if you exclude just military. So the potential is enormous. If we see success, we want to continue to build on the momentum. And there's you know, one nonpartisan issue in the US where Republicans and Democrats are united, and that's the SBIR program. Right. And so uh, you know, we've seen the success in the US and the impact that it has, and we're confident that we can replicate that success here in Canada. Very good. Thank you, Minister Baines. Uh, Minister Chandler, let me, um, let me um, center a couple of questions with you, and I'll, I'll frame it a little bit. Um, certainly from my business area, I know that uh, if you look at the impact that small businesses have in Canada in terms of job creation, you know, let's face it, we're a, we're a small to medium enterprise country. Literally 90% of job creation happens there, so your portfolio is critical to our country. But if you go deeper, the uh, jobs that are thrown off of digital economy companies, so, so companies that have their supply chains inextricably linked to digital economy, they throw off 2.4 jobs 
more than a legacy business would. So I think the opportunity is to get behind the digital economy companies and help Main Street to become digital. So when, when you think about this program from the point of view of small businesses, what are the things that you're hoping to see? What do you think the impacts will be? I think, uh, first of all, thank you for having me here. It's great to see such a great turnout. And I do want to start by acknowledging that we're on the traditional territory of the Algonquin Nation. And I do give thanks for being able to be on this land. Um, and in regards to the question, well, you said it best. Small businesses are the backbone of the Canadian economy. They are our job creators. And this will provide them the ability, I think, to be able to compete not only domestically but internationally. So when you have the government of Canada behind you and you're being able to sell a product to the government of Canada to say that's my customer, you all of a sudden open up a world of opportunities. And part of the um, mandate the Prime Minister has provided me or asked me to deliver on is to help our small businesses to grow through innovation and trade. Yeah. And this is what I think this is the solution to. So I have to commend Minister Baines and the entire team for really bringing this together to see that there is models south of the border and around the world that are working for them. How do we um, take that blueprint, as I was saying, between Waterloo and Ottawa as well, yeah. and then to make it work for our country? So you don't just duplicate it, but you take what works there, you look at what other programs are working, and how do we help our economy grow? Because small businesses are our job creators. We've seen the impacts of the strategic investments that we are making. 600,000 jobs, and we're talking about good jobs, um, good paying jobs that have been created since uh, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and our government took office. And that's because of the work that all of you are doing, that centers like this are doing. Um, and we are seeing a confidence in the economy. And yes, Yesterday, the number came out 441,000 jobs in one year. That's tremendous. Um, and I have to say, the stakeholders that I represent around the cabinet table are the very people creating those jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's what's keeping our talent here at home. And I believe programs like this will not only focus on small businesses, but will also focus on underrepresented groups. So we are going to look at small businesses, startups, 70,000 new companies every year. And how can we benefit more women to be in entrepreneurship and young entrepreneurs, indigenous people, and the list goes on. So I'm really excited uh, for the salon to take place. We've had many conversations, and I think the possibilities are endless. For it to be successful, though, we need you to be going online, checking out the challenges that are there. I understand six challenges are already available. Um, so we need you to compete with them. We need to hear from you and let us know what's working, what's not working, so that we can continue modernizing programs. So the government always challenges businesses to innovate. Um, you challenge the government to innovate, and I think that's what this pro uh, program will help us do. That's really helpful, and I, I, I can certainly attest that when I look at our companies here locally in, in our incubator, they use uh, the BCIP program a lot today. Um, but giving companies the opportunity to have a cash flow, a reference, there's no better way to set them up as uh, targets for further investment. Purchase order. Purchase order, it's exactly big, big right. Deal. So it's significant, and it, it also resonates uh, with me as well to um, help groups that may be overlooked. And as I'm in my job, uh, my, my daughter in Montreal has just opened her own business. She went through a very difficult process to get through it, so I'm watching her go through this. So as I'm going through my, my own challenges in, in, uh, in uh, building out our strategy and plan with our team here, um, I see my daughter toiling through this, and uh, she's getting it done, knowing there's programs that help to support that, in, that in initiative and that ambition. It's, it's heartwarming. It's, it hits me on a personal level. So thank you for she that. She will succeed. She will succeed. So only 16% of all small businesses are majority owned by women. But the success rate of those 16% is greater than um, our, our male counterparts. But we want everyone succeeding. So when I speak and I share these numbers, what I'm saying is we need to maximize our potential. And a program like this will help our small businesses definitely maximize their potential um, to make sure that you are able to provide a product, a solution that not only works for the government, works for the country, but will work internationally as well. Very good. And I, I also want to key in on this idea of partnerships. So we work super closely with Waterloo. And uh, I get that feedback sometimes <laughs> that we're sometimes in competition. But I can tell you that. Uh, there's no I, competition. There's no, it's actually Only healthy it's, it's global, right? So we're in IC Ottawa being part of the Great Lakes trading area, which is a $6 trillion trading block. And when I think of our business and our strategy, it's very much about competing on supply chains. So Waterloo is very much a part of that. And we, we certainly team up with them on things like autonomous vehicles. 
I was recently a speaker at one of their events on autonomous vehicles. Um, both regions have got tremendous depth in that, in that way. And so competing globally with the, the combined strength is just smart business. And so I think that's very important. I just want to say, Asti, on this program, what happens is now you don't have to be Ottawa or Waterloo or a large urban center. Right. Regardless of where you are located, you can compete for this program and you can succeed. And that means you are going to be creating growth in your community regardless of where it is. So this is a program. So you don't need Parliament Hill to be in your riding or in your region. You are able to be a solution for the government of Canada because it is your government of Canada um, and it belongs to all of us. So Very good. That actually helps me with the, uh, the final question before we open up to the audience here for questions. Um, so there was criteria set for what a small business is. And uh, I think we have it as uh, up to 499 employees. Mm -hmm. Can you help us to understand the criteria a little bit better of uh, who qualifies? I'm actually going to bounce it back over to Minister Baines, but why the 499? But that, because that's the definition of a small, medium-sized enterprise. Um, so that doesn't mean you have to have, but there are some other specifics that you were sharing earlier. Yeah, I mean, basically, um, this is really focused on Canadian companies. Mm -hmm. uh, we're being strategic with our procurement. Uh, we believe if you look at it in, from a global context, we're in a global innovation race. Other jurisdictions are really stepping up. They're using you know, public procurement as a means to help you know, develop their local ecosystems, help develop their local businesses, test out their technologies, test out their solutions. So we have to be strategic as well. So this program is really designed uh, in the Canadian ecosystem, looking at Canadian companies. Uh, and you're right, uh, one of the criteria is uh, we're focusing on smaller businesses, less than smaller, medium-sized businesses, so less than 500. We're also looking at those businesses that have a strong footprint in Canada. So 50% plus of their employees need to be situated in Canada. Um, and thirdly, they just need to be innovative. They need to be nimble uh, and come forward with the solutions we're looking for. So there's a range of challenges that uh, Minister Chagger mentioned. It's on the website. But those are the two key criteria that I would highlight. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Minister Baines and Mr. Chagger. And I can tell you I'm a big fan of the program. I think it's going to have real impact. Uh, when you look at uh, Canada's growth uh, on the global stage, uh, it's, uh, it's really important to get behind digital economy kinds of initiatives like this one. And I can't imagine a better program centering on the, the biggest part of our country's uh, business ecosystem, which is small to medium enterprise. So thank you so much, uh, both of you, for your, your answers and for the support of this kind of initiative. Thank you very much. So we should now turn this over to the audience here for any additional questions that may be on your minds. We have uh, limited time with the ministers here today, so I want to make sure we, we get your questions going. And we discussed in advance, um, and this is a strategy I usually deploy, uh, so if they're difficult uh, and detailed questions, Minister Chago will respond. <laughs> <laughs> if they're easy questions, I'd be delighted to answer. There's a mic in the uh, center. If someone uh, wants to step forward, please do. Well, thank you for this opportunity, uh, Minister Baines, uh, Minister Chagger, and I'm glad you mentioned uh, Indigenous peoples as well. And uh, I just want to say that, you know, your government currently is on a good path, uh, the Prime Minister, in terms of dealing with the Indigenous peoples and nations uh, on a distinctions-based approach. So as we go forward, we'd want to continue seeing, you know, initiatives with, of course, businesses uh, from, you know, First Nations, the Inuit, and the Métis Nation. And, uh, of course, we in the Métis Nation are looking forward to, I guess, your government responding to the Kelowna Accord. Uh, you've done so in budgets uh, 2016, 2017, but primarily for First Nations. And uh, every opportunity we have, whether it's in private or in public, uh, we want to encourage uh, members of the Cabinet to work with the Prime Minister to fulfill his uh, obligation to the Métis Nation. Uh, because he needs all the support that he can get uh, around that table. So I just wanted to throw that out. And uh, as the Métis Nation grows stronger, we're based in Western Canada. You know, as we grow stronger, so does Canada. So I want to thank you both for the openness that you've displayed to us uh, over the past year and a half. I mean, we've had some good meetings, and I know we'll continue to have good meetings. So thank you. Thank you. No, uh, thank you very much. As you mentioned, uh, uh, when it comes to the Métis Nation and overall our relationship with Indigenous communities, uh, we're very mindful of the fact that we need to have an agenda that speaks to being, the term is more inclusive, but ultimately the benefits for many, 
that includes our indigenous population. So we take enormous pride in the work we're doing through our regional economic development agencies and the focus we're having on building economic capacity in many of these communities. A great deal of focus on clean technology, for instance, uh, where there's alignment in terms of both policy but also the opportunities economically and the job creation. And programs like this are really well situated to empower communities uh, in rural and remote parts of Canada. Um, and that obviously benefits many of our Indigenous communities as well. So that's an exciting dimension to this initiative as well. Thank you. Great. Please. Please. Hi, thank you very much. I'm uh, Dave Johnston from Flex. Yes. And I just wondered if you could maybe give an example of a program that this would really work nicely into from concept to prototype. And also talk a little bit about how small businesses would find out about the pro, you know, which opportunities there are out there that they could, uh, that they could uh, compete their wares for. Sure, so I think, um, did you wanna? Okay, so, um, you know, there's, there's a range of examples, but um, for example, um, for me, this is a real big issue and you can appreciate this. I live in Mississauga and my wife goes to work in Toronto and we get in our vehicle and two hours later, we're still stuck in traffic. So gridlock, for example, uh, in our urban communities and the suburban communities. So this is a challenge municipalities are facing, provincial government, federal government. So this is a challenge we can put out there. What technologies, what solutions, what, what um, particular, so the challenge is how to deal with gridlock. So that's the challenge. What innovative solutions can companies provide to help deal with uh, gridlock? Uh, another example could be detecting diabetes more quickly in, 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 our, in our rural and remote communities. This is a, an issue that healthcare system is dealing with, particularly when it comes to our indigenous population, for example, and this is an area that we have responsibility for. So what solutions could exist? What, uh, uh, what innovative concepts or what uh, outcomes exist that could help deal with that challenge? Uh, getting off diesel uh, in some of our communities in northern part of Canada, for example. How do we get off a of diesel? So what are some of the uh, solutions around that? So these are the types of challenges that we're dealing with. These are the problems that we're facing as a government. Um, and so rather than you know, the traditional model of come and procure with us and we have you know, all these other policy areas, we're going out and these are types of examples or illustrations uh, of examples where we think if we go out, present these problems, present these challenges, then companies can come forward with their solutions. And we help them with the proof of concept. So the idea is if a company says, look, we actually have a solution, we actually give $150,000 for a proof of concept. And then we fund up to a million dollars on the prototype as well. And then they ultimately can benefit from a broader procurement policy as well. So there, that's the added bonus is we not only validate the solution, but then obviously being a marquee customer as well. So there's two components to this that, that are very uh, important to note as well. on the website so we just launched the website today yeah. for example absolutely you got it so there's six challenges right now on it uh, and there'll be many more and these challenges reflect the different departmental points of views so healthcare might have the diabetes one for example transportation might deal with gridlock etc so you're absolutely right so it'll be very transparent open to the public and fully displayed on the website. And updated regularly. So Absolutely. Don't, don't, so always take a look at it because there'll be new challenges that are posted all the time. And if we have someone in the room, if we could have the website. Uh, innovative right. Solutions. Canada.ca slash Innovative Solutions. Innovate. Innovative Dash Solutions. Right. <laughs> Brilliant. It's already bookmarked. Exactly. Good, good work. I, and these challenges will have a huge range. Like yep. there's nothing too big or too small that could be on it because we all know that there's no shortage of challenges for the government. Um, so whether it's the service and so forth. And I think that's what the whole purpose is that we can actually have um, our businesses benefit off of the challenges that government is facing and then be the solutions for it, so. And Minister Jagger, there is no um, vertical that's not, it's all verticals of business and so it's not limited to anything but what the challenge is that the particular department or agency is having. Correct, that's right. Perfect. I do want to acknowledge that our uh, last question came from uh, Flex, who's a major sponsor here at Bayview Yards, oh, and it helps us to do programming 
uh, here, such as things like Meetup Mondays, where we have uh, organizations like Machine Learning Ottawa come here in droves. This, this room is filled up with Machine Learning Ottawa, Ottawa Civic Tech, uh, Open Data Ottawa, all of these different organizations, largely because of the support of companies like Flex. Thank you. Michael? Uh, thanks, Mike. And just following the lead of the previous speaker, I'll introduce myself, Michael Oster. I run Ottawa Community Loan Fund, an agency funded by all three levels of government, a tenant here at the Innovation Centre, thanks to the generous support of the City of Ottawa and Invest Ottawa. So, uh, two-part question. Uh, the first is, I've heard that um, a senior task force responsible somehow into Cabinet is recommending that Canada become a nation of 100 million people uh, showing rapid growth from our current population of 35 million. Can you confirm and comment on that, perhaps in the context of the innovation, small business? Uh, nobody I've found in my 40-year career is more innovative and uh, uh, than uh, immigrants, newcomers to Canada, and I think Ottawa leads the way in that. So if you could comment on that growth projection and how it relates to an immigration strategy. Sure. Okay. Sure, I just wasn't sure. I always double check with the house leader first. Um, uh, so I'm, a, I'm just programmed this way. I look in her direction, she gives me permission and I speak. Um, and uh, so you're absolutely right. We as a government have been very clear that we're open to trade, uh, open to investment, uh, open to the internet, net neutrality, uh, and open to people. And um, when it comes to open to people, we articulated our immigration policy by saying we're going to welcome over a million people in the next three years. That'll have a significantly positive impact on our population. And by the way, we have good quality, reliable data now because we reintroduced the mandatory long-form census. You're here. Um, but with respects to the overall projection of 100 million people, there's no concrete targets or discussions. It's just still something that think tanks and different organizations have talked about. But our government policy is definitely more people uh, looking at immigration as a means not only to increase the population, but as you said rightfully, looking at it through the lens of economic growth, looking at it through the lens of how immigration really allows us to create a value proposition. So when I'm in China, when we were in China together, or when we're in India, or when we're in the US, and they talk about Canada and we talk about investing in Canada, the thing that differentiates us is the fact that we have access to global talent. That not only do we have a strong, incredible domestic pipeline of talented people, talented Canadians, but we're also uh, open uh, to, uh, to global talent. And that's why I was very proud of our global skills strategy program that we launched. So if you're a company here, you want to grow, you want to scale up, and you need somebody high in demand with technical expertise, you can bring that person into Canada with a two-week mm -hmm. visa processing time. And that program is up and running since June. It's very successful, and many people have come through that program. So uh, we, have, we, we are betting big on immigration. We've increased our levels. We're looking at the global skills strategy to bring more people in. Um, and that's really our vision in the short term. But we have no specific program in place for those ambitious targets that you highlighted. Thank you. And uh, if the House Leader would allow part two of my question, um, <laughs> which is, uh, you've talked about small and medium business. Uh, Stats Can and Industry Canada define a micro business as one to four employees. So I just want you to confirm that there's no inadvertent exclusion of micro business when you say small and medium. No exclusion. Thank you so much. Thank it you very much. It can even be a startup, and that's exactly it. So, as um, Minister Baines was saying about the 150,000 for the proof of concept, so you could be creating a solution for the challenge that's been put out there. So it doesn't mean that you have the solution. It's that you're creating a solution for the challenge, um, and that's also to provide some support to that business to be able to grow. Um, on your earlier point, I just wanted to um, add in as well that when you if you ever want to travel the world, you can travel the world in our country. Right. And Canada is a trading nation, and there's nothing better than having people that speak the language and eat the food and know the culture of other countries when you go to build a relationship and a, those people-to-people -people ties. And that's the benefit of immigration as well, is that we have people uh, from around the world that are Canadians. So when we were in China, for example, together, Mary Ying was with us, um, Sean Chen was with us, and Mark Eiking was with us, and all three of them, um, had varying degrees of ties with China and that really did help uh, the people to people ties which builds our business to business ties so yeah. it's definitely an asset. I agree 100 percent. Cavuto in Canada is a great example of that. I think 16 languages at last count. That's so, amazing. Thank you all.
Thank, Thank you. you. And, and just speaking from the angel experience and us working with early stage companies, that need to access talent globally is what makes our companies grow and scale and stay here. So it's very, very important that we are able to attract that talent and your program of bringing uh, talent in quickly is, is really a good asset for our early stage companies. Wonderful. Paul, we have time for one real quick one. <laughs> We're just uh, we're going to have to to break out. It'll this it'll be quick. Um, you talked about the different sizes of small, medium-sized businesses. One of the biggest challenges for a small organization, getting away from the definitions, an organization of three or five or fifteen people, is that these programs exist and many already do. And this one looks amazing, by the way. They don't have people on staff or the capacity to say, let's do all our work for our paying clients or on our current projects and initiatives. And let's also do this process thing that we have to do <laughs> to get access to this possible $100 million. Have you put any thought into the program on how that barrier is going to be addressed? Uh, absolutely. We'll, we'll make it user friendly. Uh, we also have launched Innovation Canada, a one-stop shop for businesses uh, to go to. Uh, the idea is to look at not only the innovation programs in our portfolio of innovation, science, and economic development, but across government. Uh, and, and so we're consolidating programs, we're simplifying programs, we've created a one-stop shop, and we've made it more user-friendly because your point is completely valid. People do not have, or businesses in particular, small businesses do not have a government relations office. Right. They don't have a legal department. They don't have a government procurement department. So they don't have the luxury of of filling out these forms and then you know trial and error and trying to determine because they're trying to also pay their bills and grow and expand. So we, we understand that and hence why we made the process more simpler as well. And as, as, as Minister Chagger mentioned, that proof of concept and prototype aspect is again designed to be um, small business friendly. Thank you. I'd add in that uh, uh, I can tell you that for the Ottawa uh, organizations that we have here in the incubator, some of the examples, Minister, you pointed out earlier, like um, uh, diabetes and, and, and coverage and big issues like that, we have companies here that would be very interested in those challenges, and we would certainly help them to Excellent. be able to respond. Right, so and I think that's what we'll look us. for our incubators and yeah. accelerators to help across the country. Excellent. Yeah. I think with that, that brings this part of our program to a close. I thank both Minister Jagger and Mr. Baines for uh, joining us here in Ottawa. Thank you so much for launching from here. We, we appreciate that. And uh, I think we now move into the next part of our, our program. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.